They're selling body parts. They are. Texas Medical School. They are leasing the body parts of human beings who have expired without proper protocol, permission, or anything else. They're just doing it because they assume nobody gives a damn. Well, we do. With millions watching and many people benefiting from this program called Indisputable, we just need 1% of the viewers to become a paid member so we can continue to bring this content to you. Now back to the show. I'm going to take you to this first clip, NBC. Here it is. Victor Carl Honey was a U.S. military veteran who served in the Army for nearly a decade. He was very friendly. He was outgoing, a nice dresser. After being honorably discharged, he began struggling with mental illness and homelessness. Then in 2022, he died of an apparent heart attack while living alone on the streets of Dallas. Honey was entitled to a burial with military honors, but instead, something else happened. I think they think, homeless black man, you know, he ain't got no family. They don't care about him. You were wrong about this one. An NBC News investigation has found that Honey was among more than 2,300 people who died in the Dallas-Fort Worth region and were given to a state medical school that used and made money off their body parts, at times as their own families searched for them. For Honey, within a month of his death, the Dallas Medical Examiner's Office deemed him unclaimed, reporting phones for family members they tried were disconnected. And yet, he did have relatives, some living right there in Dallas. His ex-wife Kimberly and their two adult children say they had even visited Honey in a hospital months prior to his death. To hear that your ex-husband has been deemed an unclaimed person, what, what's your reaction to that? That's crazy. We're here. We've always been here. His son has his same name. How could he be unclaimed? This is where Victor Honey's body was then taken, the University of North Texas Health Science Center, where according to government documents, his body was then frozen, cut into pieces, and sent out to different medical groups across the country, all without his prior consent or his family's knowledge. Now you may say, wow, doc, that's negligent. <clears throat> it was malicious. There's money connected to this whole scheme, and a lot of it. There's more. Those documents show Honey's severed right leg sent to a Swedish medical device maker for $341. His torso shipped to a medical education company in Pittsburgh, which paid $900. And for $210, a pair of bones from his skull went to the U.S. Army for military medical training. His right leg was sold. Yes, ma'am. His temporal bone, his torso. Yes, ma'am. Do you think he would have wanted this? No, he never wanted to be, the 10 years we were married, he never wanted to be an organ donor. We talked about it. And Honey is not alone. NBC News reviewed thousands of pages of government records and data which reveal repeated failures to reach family members before declaring a body unclaimed. Our team has identified 12 cases in which families learned months or years later that a loved one had been provided to the medical school. Five of those families found out what happened from NBC News, including Honey's, a year and a half after his death. I don't believe they tried to find us. I don't believe they did. You can find people. NBC found me in a day. You can find people. Why do you think they did it? For money. They did it to him, a decorated military veteran. They'll do it to anybody. Now, I want to remind you, this is a leasing scheme. So the prices that you heard affixed to particular body parts, those are leasing prices. So they get to charge that, send it to the agency, and then charge it again to either that agency or another, or another one. It's a leasing price. Now, there's more money involved. It gets worse. Here it is. For five years, the University of North Texas Health Science Center has had agreements with Dallas and Tarrant counties to take their unclaimed bodies for free saving them a combined million dollars a year in cremation and burial costs. It also helped the school, making it about $2.5 million a year by leasing body parts to outside groups, according to financial records. Somebody needs to answer, or somebody's, for what they, what they did, what they're doing. For 10 months, our team has been seeking answers from both counties and the Health Science Center, 
all three declined our repeated requests for interviews, but in statements, the counties told us they would be reviewing their contracts. The Health Science Center at first defended its program, arguing using unclaimed bodies is critical in the training of future doctors. But just days before this story was set to air, it made a stunning reversal, telling NBC News it was suspending the program and firing the top officials who led it. Long before his bleak final years, when he struggled with mental illness and lived mostly on the streets, Victor Carl Honey joined the Army. He served honorably for nearly a decade. And so when his heart gave out, and he died alone 30 years later, he was entitled to a burial with military honors. Instead, without his consent or his family family's knowledge, the Dallas County Medical Examiner's Office decided to violate protocol, ignore his military ranking, and gave his body to a state medical school. It was then frozen, cut into pieces, and leased across the whole damn country of money. A Swedish medical device maker paid $341 for access to Honey's severe severed right leg to train clinicians to harvest veins using his surgical tool. The medical education company spent $900 to send his torso to Pittsburgh so trainees could practice implanting a spine stimulator. And the U.S. Army, the U.S. Army, paid $210 to use a pair of bones from his skull to educate military medical personnel at a hospital near San Antonio. The irony of that. In the name of scientific advancement, clinical education and fiscal expediency, the bodies of the destitute in the Dallas-Fort Worth region have been routinely collected from hospital beds, nursing homes, and homeless encampments and used for training and research without their consent and often without the approval of any survivors an NBC News investigation found in the last years of his life, Victor Honey was homeless and on the streets of Dallas. When a destructive winter storm hit in 2021, he took shelter at the city convention center. Cooper Neal Honey, who died in September 2022, is one of about 2,350 people whose unclaimed bodies have been given to the Fort Worth-based University of North Texas Health Science Center since 2019 under agreements with Dallas and Tarrant counties. Among these, more than 830 bodies were selected by the center for dissection and study. After the medical school and other groups were finished, the bodies were cremated and in most cases, um, interred at area cemeteries or scattered at sea. Some had families who were looking for them. Now they're continuing to classify this as unclaimed bodies. They are only unclaimed when the protocol to claim them has been administratively exhausted. If that hasn't happened, what you have engaged in is criminal. Yes, we've reported right here on Indisputable how individuals have done things with a dead body, a corpse, after the person passed away. They did not properly report it. What happened? They went to jail. They got arrested. They got indicted. For months, as NBC News reported, Health Science Center officials defended their practices. While they were investigating this, they defended the practice, arguing that using unclaimed bodies was essential for the training of future doctors. But on Friday, after reporters shared detailed findings of the investigation, the center announced it was immediately suspending its body donation program and firing the officials who led it. 
how convenient. The center said it was also hiring a consultant to investigate the program's operation. Quote, as a result of the information brought to light through your inquiries, it has become clear that failures existed in the management and oversight of the University of North Texas Health Science Centers. The program has fallen short of the standards of respect, care, and professionalism that we demand. Last year, NBC News revealed in its lost rights investigation that coroners and medical examiners in Mississippi and nationally had repeatedly failed to notify families of their loved ones' deaths before burying them in those graveyards. We reported on that right here on Indisputable. That investigation led reporters to North Texas, where officials had come to view the unclaimed dead, not as a costly burden, but as a free resource. So the university says, this is below our standards. This is below our standards. Thank you for bringing this to our attention. These are reporters. They're not medical experts. They just asked a few questions. They advocated for the family. The protocols that were ignored by the covering agency were protocols they ignored intentionally. Before its sudden shuttering last week, the Health Science Center's body business flourished. On paper, the arrangement with Dallas and Tarrant counties offered a pragmatic solution to an expensive problem. Local medical examiners and coroners nationwide bear the considerable cost of burying or cremating tens of thousands of unclaimed bodies every year. Disproportionately black male, mentally ill and homeless. These individuals <clears throat> whose family members often cannot easily be reached or whose relatives cannot, will not pay for the cremation of burial. The University of North Texas Health Science Center used some of these bodies to teach medical students. Others, like Honey's, were parceled out for profit medical training technology companies, including industry giants like Johnson & Johnson, Boston Scientific, and Medtronic. They rely on human remains to develop products and teach doctors how to use them. The Health Science Center advertised the bodies as being, quote, of the highest quality found anywhere in the U.S., end quote. Opponents say using unclaimed bodies transforms a tragic situation into one of hope and service, providing a steady supply of human specimens needed to educate doctors and advance medical research. But for families who later discover their missing relatives were dissected and studied, the news is haunting, compounding their grief and depriving them of the opportunity to mourn. Both the country and the medical school are doing, doing this because it saves them money. But that doesn't make it right, said Thomas Chapney, an anatomy professor at the University of Miami Miller School of Medicine, who researches the ethical use of human bodies. Quote, since these individuals did not consent, they should not be used in any form or fashion. The University of North Texas Health Center in Fort Worth has used hundreds of unclaimed bodies in the past five years. Zerb Mellish for NBC News a half a century ago. It was common for U.S. medical schools to use unclaimed bodies and doing so remains legal in most of the country, including Texas. Many programs have halted the practice in recent years, though in some states, including Hawaii, Minnesota, and Vermont, have flatly prohibited it. Part of an evolution of medical eth ethics that has called on anatomists to treat human specimens with the same dignity shown to living patients. The University of North Texas Health Science Center charged in the opposite direction. Through public records request, NBC News obtained thousands of pages of government records and data documenting the acquisition, dissection, and distribution of unclaimed bodies by the center over a five-year period. An analysis of the material reveals repeated failures by death investigators in Dallas, Tarrant counties. Here's the intentional ignoring of the protocol. And by the center, 
to contact family members who are reachable before declaring a body unclaimed. Reporters examined dozens of cases and identified 12 in which family members learned weeks, months, or years later that a relative had been provided to the medical school, leaving many survivors angry and traumatized. Five of those families found out what happened from NBC News. Reporters used public records, public record database, ancestry websites, and social media searches to locate and reach them within a few days, some within the same day. Even though county center officials said they were unable to find any survivors of these individuals. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a criminal enterprise. This is a criminal enterprise. Great reporting by NBC. I do believe it goes deeper. For the individual investigators to do this, I would argue someone needs to check their personal bank account. Who in the hell would do such a thing at a job without receiving something else on the back end of that? There's a dignity that should be applied to those, especially to those who have had a difficult life because of what this United States military did to them. There should be no one homeless on the streets of America, not with the wealth we have, but especially those that signed up to serve the government. All right. Yes, it's amazing. They got unlimited money to blow up things or kill people. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to taking care of the soldiers they recruit, all of a sudden, there's no money and there's no respect. Yeah. And it's like what you said, there is no dignity either. Right. And, and the way that the Republicans especially love to talk about veterans and the military and how we have to support them, they really don't seem to care that much about these veterans once they come back here to the to the United States. But if there is one thing I can say about Texas is that we really don't respect people's rights to their own bodies here. So all of this kind yeah. of feels fitting, which is very, very sad, especially since I live here. Yet Texas, at least prior to recent years, has been a place where doctors and aspiring doctors wanted to come to study and to train and to practice. Here in Houston, we have a world famous and world renowned medical center. Medicine is arguably one of the three major industries here in Houston. We've got oil and gas, we've got space, and we've got medicine. This medical school was up in the Dallas Fort Worth area, but the students who attend these schools often end up practicing throughout Texas. This is a very scary development for a world-class medical education system to become tied up in this type of behavior really makes you side eye the entire industry. I'm not demonizing doctors here. I want to be very clear. I'm talking about the business side of the medical industry. The business of medicine is often at odds with the practice of medicine. And yes. here in Texas, the practice of medicine is often at odds with the politics of medicine. But this isn't about either politics or ethics for the people perpetuating this scheme. It's about business. It's about money. It always kind of is. Running these medical schools is very expensive. You would think that the astronomical medical school tuitions would help cover some of those operation costs but that is another conversation. And as much as we like to pretend that ethics influence business, we know that in the real world, they're kind of two separate things. They're treated as two separate things and they're deliberately kept separate, even if relevant parties pretend that that is not the case. I'm interested to see if and how this affects not just the medical industry here in Texas, but future enrollment in Texas medical schools. If it does, it could potentially have widespread and devastating and costly consequences. And the potential loss of money from medical school tuitions or practicing physicians in the state will ultimately drive that change here. Whether or not that should be the driver of change, that's likely what will be. Yeah, you know, simple remedy. Um, get rid of the bloviated Department of Defense budget, cut it down by 80% at least, make sure that we have money so people can go to college, medical school included.